In this lesson, we'll learn about the principle of straight ahead and pose to pose. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so straight ahead and pose to pose are two different techniques that you could use when you're animating. If you wanted to straight ahead your animation, it basically means you would um, do one drawing or one pose um, one after the other. So it's a very linear process, and that can be good, right? That can be good because you can kind of be more spontaneous and kind of come up with new ideas along the way. Pose to pose involves more planning, more, um, kind of more thought around what you want um, to begin with and how you really want to just kind of um, lay out all your main poses um, kind of your beginning and your end and kind of perhaps fill in the pieces, okay? You, you just have more clarity um, and strength as an end result with pose to pose. So we'll kind of kind of talk about um, both of them and kind of demonstrate them here. So what I want to do is kind of have like a little character here. He basically faints and hits the ground. We'll kind of keep it sketchy um, for our demonstration. Towards the end, I'll pause the video and... Uh, We'll, have, um, we'll come back with some nice clean line work just so you can see it a little bit more clearly. So I've got him standing here on this first cell. Uh, let me turn on my onion skinning here. So uh, I'm just going to straight ahead this. I've got my first drawing and then maybe for the second drawing, kind of think about where his legs are here. We've got him, you know, coming forward. So his arms would be back kind of right about there. His head would be back, kind of got a little pear-shaped head. So something kind of like that. Okay, so I'm just moving forward, one right after the other. So maybe on this one, he's kind of started to make, you know, he, he's made contact with the ground, perhaps uh, with, his, with his head there. Kind of squashing his head a little bit. So I'm just kind of coming up with with these ideas as I go. So we have his legs kind of coming back, kind of like that. Again, I'm just kind of keeping this real loosey-goosey. So this is basically straight ahead animation. And and, and again, it, it can be really good because you can be more spontaneous and kind of create and kind of come up with things um, as you go. And you can kind of, you know, really put to use your onion skinning tool here and kind of scrub through and see how things are looking. And so this, again, it, it, it's a fine method, but it really wouldn't work very well, and I wouldn't recommend it if you are dealing with a scene where your background or your layout involves a really strong perspective. Perhaps you're looking down an alleyway or a street, and the the goal of the animation is to have the character perhaps running away um, from the viewer or running towards the viewer, that might be a little bit difficult and very time consuming to straight ahead the animation, okay? So you would probably want to use a pose to pose approach, okay? And that just involves um, just a lot more a lot more planning, okay? More time is really being spent improving uh, kind of the key key drawings. You, you can really kind of come up with a lot more control. Uh, have a lot more control over the overall movement. Um, and in the end, you're just going to have a lot more clarity. There's just a lot more strength to it. Okay? So what I would like to do, now that we've kind of gone over what straight ahead is and kind of just demonstrated, just with a couple drawings here going one after the other, what that is, I want to delete those two. We'll still keep our first drawing there. It's kind of my initial pose. And I want to think about where does he end? Where does he end up? What is this result of this action that's going to take place. Well, he's going to faint, and he's going to hit the ground. So let's start off by going to the end of our story here, if you will, and let's draw that pose. So our character, his head may be right about, kind of right about there. Got his nose kind of right there. A little bit of, a little bit of squashing to that head. Back of the feet, and just kind of trying to get a feel as to kind of where I want to place him. So you can see more thought is kind of going into what I want here. So 
something kind of about like that. You might see part of the other foot back there as well. His arm is kind of maybe out to the to the side right there. So this is where he ends up, okay? Beginning a story, end a story, okay? Planning. We're planning this out. So what happens in between, okay? So what I might want to do is I'll bring this out maybe right about here. And we can start to kind of fill in the pieces. So we could kind of figure out where's the middle of our story. And I'll go ahead and extend out that little blue bl bracket right there for our onion skinning. And we kind of figure out what happens in between. So in between, we probably have that kind of that similar pose that I was drawing earlier for the character falling forward. Okay, so his head head might be back. Kind of like that. Arms back as well. Okay, so we're kind of figuring out that, that middle pose. And seeing how I'm kind of drawing on that cell in between, it's automatically extending the exposure of that first drawing, which I don't want to do that. So I'm just deleting it. So... Again, we're kind of planning this all out, kind of figuring out the beginning, the end, and then kind of coming back to the middle here, what happens in between um, that action. So I'm kind of breaking it down further and further. And so perhaps before he just starts to come forward, maybe we want to kind of have him lean back, kind of fly back to kind of really um, get the point across that he's, he's fainting. Maybe he... You know, his body might start to swing back forward first and then come to the ground. And we're kind of slipping in another principle here, which we'll talk about more, but basically a little bit of anticipation. So probably right here in this drawing, um, I may want to kind of figure out where I want his body to be at before it goes straight into falling forward. And again, this is where your onion skinning uh, comes in really handy because you can kind of line up things like with the feet so he's kind of planted there before he uh, kind of hits the ground so his head might be back kind of back here his body is tilted backwards arm is hanging back kind of like that So I really like uh, post to pose. Now something like this where it's real profile view, you could really do this either straight ahead or post to pose. Again, I just want to stress that if you have a, a layout, a situation where there's a really strong perspective with whatever, whatever background you have, I, I would recommend doing it like this where you kind of break it down, figure out and plan out the action just with uh, a little bit more, a little more clarity. Now coming ahead of this drawing right here, might want to think about, okay, he's now making contact, contact with the ground. So his head will probably hit the, hit the dirt first. And then we'll have his legs kind of, kind of coming back like that. Again, I'm just keeping this all real rough. I'll kind of show you a, a cleaned up version before we end. Arms back like that. And then what happens in between these two right here? So just another drawing. Again, onion skinning, very helpful. So I can kind of break this down even further. So something kind of like that. So he's kind of we're kind of leading him into that final kind of final pose. And while I'm at it, let's go ahead and extend the exposure of these. Just selecting them all, holding shift, going right clicking, going to exposure. We'll set the exposure to two. So what do we have here? We have one, two, three, four, five. We have six drawings. Okay. 
Let's kind of play this back and see what we got. So that's kind of cool. Kind of get a feel for the animation here. And so this this was kind of a pose-to-pose -pose approach where we started out with, again, just uh, the beginning, the end, and then we went to the middle to kind of see, well, what happens in between the beginning and the end of this story? You know, how does he get from the beginning to the end? And then from there, we just kind of start to break it down even further. So this is a good way to plan out everything. You have, a, again, a little bit more clarity and hopefully something that just feels stronger than if you just did it straight ahead one after the other, okay? I'm going to pause the video real quick. I'm just going to kind of clean this up, okay, um, on another layer here. That way we can play it back and just see it a little bit more clearly. Okay, so I've basically, um, on this layer right here, I've just added some clean line work. Um, over our different uh, sketchy drawings there. I'll go ahead and hide the visibility of the sketch layer and kind of see that just a little bit more clearly. But again, um, just as I, I've mentioned uh, several times, uh, with pose to pose, you want to just kind of plan it out. It involves planning. So um, beginning of the story, end of the story, what happens in between, and then just breaking it down even further. If you were going to straight ahead this animation, you would just go one right after the other. So straight ahead involves a more spontaneous um, approach. Pose to pose involves more planning. So I would use pose to pose if you've got a, a, a situation or a layout that involves um, a really complex or strong perspective. Um, again, maybe a, a character running towards you down an alleyway. Um, but if you want to have something more kind of a profile kind of set up like this, maybe a character walking across the screen, you could probably do it um, straight ahead. So hopefully you find that beneficial. In our next lesson, we're going to move on to another principle, um, uh, basically talking about arcs. So stick around, and we'll see you then.